One Zambia, One Nation, with the news at 20 on TV2. I'm Patricia Ellis. Top stories in the news. Two Zambian students have drowned in the Mediterranean Sea in Algeria. Some traders are abandoning their stalls in the Lusaka city market, opting to trade from the streets or relocating to other markets. Also coming up in the news, Football Association of Zambia FAR's president Andrew Kamanga says he remains hopeful that the Chipolo Polo can win their fifth Kosafa title this year. And now the news in detail. Two Zambian students have drowned in the Mediterranean Sea in Algeria. Kelvin Msanda, aged 19, and Innocent Kangwa, aged 20, had gone to the seaside beach with the other foreign students to celebrate their completion of their French language instruction course. This happened yesterday, June 3rd, 2018. This is according to a statement issued by Acting Minister of Higher Education, Shitalu Chilufia. Dr. Chilufia has explained that Kelvin was swept into the sea by the wave and Innocent drowned while trying to save his Zambian colleague. The bodies of the two students have since been retrieved. Dr. Chilufia says the Zambian government, through the embassy in Cairo, Egypt, is working to repatriate the bodies of the students back home. Kelvin was a first-year student, while Innocent was a third-year student studying electrical engineering, and they were both on government scholarships. Some vendors who were displaced from Lusaka's Kamala trading area have staged a protest at the Civic Center over delays by the Lusaka City Council to allocate them stands. They have told TV2 News that after being displaced from the streets, the local authorities promised to find an alternative trading space within six months. However, this has not happened. More in this report. A group of angry street vendors in Lusaka protested and demanded for answers from the Lusaka City Council in the early hours of the day. They want to know why they are not being given trading spaces. The vendors have told TV2 News that after being displaced from the streets, the local authorities promised to find an alternative trading space within six months. This, however, has not happened. The leader of the organized street vendors and traders cooperative, Stephen Banda, tries to calm the situation. And the, the council is not refusing to just one percent more spaces. That market which is there is your market. Yes. Yes. Ni processi ya meni ya chitabuanji ya chedua. We know to say from December to today, ni six months yes. down the line. Yes. yes. The council is not just seated, waiting to see to eat that. But it was a vutika. Ah, ah. Yes. But his words fell on deaf ears. Meanwhile, Lusaka City Council Acting Public Relations Manager George Sichimba says the delayment is due to ongoing construction of toilets at the Tokyo Way trading site. I want to state that the delay has not been because of uh, Lusaka City Council not wanting to uh, to allocate stands there. What what the problem was was that uh, when the contractor moved on site to try and uh, uh, construct it, uh, an abrupt block there, uh, it was discovered that the water table was still so high and the water was oozing out and so they could not continue with the, the construction. And so we had to wait uh, a bit so that the water table goes, uh, goes uh, slightly lower so that uh, we can now construct uh, these toilets. And the displaced vendor's anger is understood as the streets was their only source of survival. But they are urged to exercise a little more patience with the authorities. Kaben Bekasabola, TV2 News, in Lusaka. In a related development, some traders are abandoning their stalls in the Lusaka city market, opting to trade from the streets or relocating to other markets. And market management says it is losing close to 50% of its monthly returns due to this migration of traders from stores. Meanwhile, some traders still within the market have complained that business has been slow as some of their colleagues are trading by the gate. More in this report. There are basically two scenarios when one enters the city market gates. The side that shows a seemingly vibrant business environment and another showing the exact opposite. Stalls stand empty and deserted. Market management is grappling with a new challenge since the market was gutted in April last year. 
with more traders finding alternative spaces elsewhere and others just choosing to chance the streets revenue collection has been less than average because inside the market there is no business per se so most of our revenue are collecting from the abrusion blocks and the and the and the gates uh, which is which is which is which is known as uh, as the car park uh, for one simple reason uh, that the market is not full uh, they are, we don't have as many people in the market and people are skeptical uh, they ask that the market to be closed every day and we also have got bad eggs that are going around telling people that oh, the market to be closed so uh, hence people are running outside from the inside to the outside the traders here are also affected <laughs> Panto have been given different plans here. Pamma Kodi, Doru Chero, Bare Chero, Roku Pundiri Ra. Eh, money and Zadiri pa first na pa pasiana ko. Eh, ye na business na iwe de ra fesa na fesa. Because the eh upo iko seri sa na ba di plans a be ne ba ba sha ingi sha mukati ap. Bara chipi she fi di plans. Tuba customer have been given unfiri ti market ya pia. So kufuma pa ya pia ne ba di sa. Once ba chosa kon zero ati a. Market in Apia is a Gravichan market. Management is calling for people without trading space to reapply. Penlop Sikazwe, TV2 News, Lusaka. You're watching the TV2 News at 20. We go for a break and when we come back, security officers combing Chiba village in Kasama for drugs. Do stay tuned. To continue the news, a Lusaka-based community leader, Kasonde Mwenda, has called on the general public to take it upon themselves to clean their surroundings. And speaking in an interview with TV2 News, Mr. Mwenda says in order to ensure most areas are clean, other initiatives of effectively implementing cleaning programs can be used. This is because in the cleaning exercise effected at the local market in Kabanana area, a pair of donkeys was used to transport the waste collected during the exercise. Details in this report. This market in Lusaka's Kabanana area has its own challenges like other trading sites in the country. Due to indiscriminate dumping, the issue of garbage is outstanding here. However, today a community leader has seen the need to help traders, marshalling them into a cleaning exercise. With him is a special mode of transport to help move the collected waste. Not only did the market traders clean the market, but all nearby toilets were also disinfected. The project is called Operation Donkey. It's an initiative that has arisen out of the need for us as individuals as a community to start stepping out you know already we have got the presidential declaration that we need to make our surroundings clean and healthy and this is something we should inculcate in our community so right here now today we are in Kabanana the other time we are in Bauleni we've been moving from different places and we are having people invite us those who have seen a challenge of health where there is debt and they want it clean they have been calling on us and then we partner with them and we work ability to have they don't have the chemical to disinfect their surroundings they don't even have the transport so to make it sustainable I had to employ the donkey method because donkeys are easy to sustain meanwhile the traders who participated in the exercise have expressed happiness for this initiative we have been seeing this project taking place here in Kapana and of course we're having as you can see we're having a very big challenge here it's all about us people working together Helping out the the market and surrounding community will now hope the exercise is the start of things never to be repeated. Martha Banda, TV2 News, Lusaka. Police and the Drug Enforcement Commission have intensified operations to clamp down on drug trafficking activities in Kasama's notorious Chiba village in Northern Province. Northern Province Police Commissioner Richard Moine has confirmed the development to Zanis in Kasama today. He has explained that this is in the wake of numerous complaints from members of the public on high levels of abuse and sale of cannabis in the area. Mr. Moine says the officers have since started conducting patrols in the said village. He has further called on other stakeholders like the church to help promote good morals in communities by discouraging such illicit activities.
We go for another break and when we come back, speak of the National Assembly Tours constituency. Stay tuned. We'll continue with the news. Speaker of the National Assembly, Patrick Matibini, has embarked on a nationwide familiarization tour of constituency offices in order to explore the opportunities and challenges such facilities face. Dr. Matibini was speaking today in Kabwe Central Province when he met members of Parliament for Wacha and Kabwe Central constituencies. The Speaker has explained that constituency offices are an important link between the National Assembly and constituencies. And Wacha Member of Parliament, Sydney Mushanga, who is also Central Province Minister, has described the Speaker's visit as historic and says the visit will help Dr. Matibini to appreciate how constituency offices operate. Meanwhile, Kabwe Central Member of Parliament Tutu Angulube says the visits to constituency offices will enhance the parliamentary works. Okay. So, offices, uh, as far as uh, my office is concerned, uh, provide a very essential adjunct uh, between the National Assembly on one hand and the communities, on the other hand. Uh, the Constitution offices also uh, primarily house uh, the respective areas, area member, <coughs> member of parliament for, for the areas. Uh, and, and the primary purpose of this uh, national tour of Constitution offices is actually to explore uh, the challenges as well as opportunities that are available uh, in promoting uh, this concept of uh, constituent offices. For you just to step out of uh, parliament, it becomes a, a historical. And uh, I think it will also even be indicated if uh, there's somewhere that this country is uh, uh, documenting uh, such kind of events, I think it will be uh, indicated. And uh, I think uh, as member of parliament for Washa parliamentary constituents, I do not have a doubt that, uh, like you have indicated, that uh, um, in your tour of duty, you want to be on the ground, you want to see what is happening, also getting first-hand information. I think uh, uh, now, even uh, going forward, no one is going to uh, cheat. We, we believe your visit will enhance um, the parliamentary work in the sense that um, our parliamentary office receives complaints and also attends to um, uh, members of the public even when the members of parliament are not here and so far i think uh, we are doing very well uh, because uh, we have designed a method by which whatever documents are received at the office my office will send them to my whatsapp I give them my comments if it means a referral or a reply. So we want to keep the parliamentary work in real time. Dr. Matebini, who is accompanied by the clerk of the National Assembly, Cecilia Mbewe, among other staff, has since proceeded to the Copperboard province. A 13-year-old boy of Lusaka Zingalume compound has gone missing. Vosta Mizinga went missing on Friday, June 1, 2018, around 06 hours. His grandfather, Crispin Simusokwe, says Vosta was last seen wearing a checked brown long-sleeved shirt, a grey trousers and without shoes. Mr. Simusokwe says Vosta is light in complexion, tall and slim. He says his grandson is a mental patient with difficulties in talking. Mr. Simusokwe has appealed to anyone with information to report to the nearest police station or call 095-483-294 or 0979-388-732. We go for our final break and thereafter we come back with the rest of the news. And now the rest of the news. Football Association of Zambia Fans President Andrew Kamanga says he remains hopeful that the Chipolo Polo can win their fifth Kosafa title this year. Kamanga also says he expects some of the players at the Kosafa tournament to make it into the final team ahead of the AFCON qualifiers. Meanwhile, Kamanga says the Chipolo Polo will have a new coach by the end of this week. He has told ZNBC Sports in an interview in Indola that the job is open to both local and foreign coaches. We've uh, gone into overdrive to start the process. We had a technical committee meeting earlier in the week, and I think uh, this coming week 
we will be making some announcements. Uh, I think the process is still ongoing. We should be able to announce the new coach. Oh, the criteria is open. The assignment is very clear. So whoever fits the bill, but priority is that uh, qualifying to the next AFCON, which is 2019 Cameroon, is not negotiable. Well, I think uh, the expectation is that we should continue to deliver uh, positive results. As you will appreciate, we are just about to get into the next phase of uh, the AFCON qualifiers in September and October. And I think the team that is uh, in Kosafa, we expect that some of uh, the players will make it into the AFCON team. And hopefully they can get to the finals. So if they play three games, they've got the chance to become champions for the fifth time, uh, in, which will be a record for Zambia. In international sports news, Liverpool forward Mohamed Salah, Salah has been named in Egypt's World Cup squad despite being injured in the Champions League final. Salah, 25, will not meet up with his teammates until 9th June as he continues for his recovery from a shoulder injury. Egypt's opening World Cup fixtures against Uruguay on 15th June. They meet hosts Russia on 19th June and conclude their campaign in Group A against Saudi Arabia on 25th June. Back to the local sports news, the Olympic Youth Development Center, OIDC, is set to host an international judo coaching course starting this weekend, June 6th to June 12th. Some of the countries to be represented include Zimbabwe, Kenya, Mauritius, Nigeria, Seychelles, Gabon, and host Zambia. Zambia Judo Association General Secretary Mavutonguni has confirmed saying the coaching practical course has been organized by the International Judo Federation, IJF. Six judo international experts are expected in the country to conduct, to conduct the training and will enhance the performance of Zambian athletes as local coaches will be taught skills of nurturing judokas, among others. Meanwhile, OIDC Director Frederick Tangala says preparations to host the International Judoka International Judo Federation International Judo Coaching Practical Practicals are progressing well. This is according to a statement released to TV2 Sports in Osaka today. To end the news, a recap on the top stories. Two Zambian students have drowned in the Mediterranean Sea in Algeria. Kelvin Musanda, age 19, and Innocent Kangwa, age 20, had gone to the seaside beach with other foreign students to celebrate their completion of their French language instruction course. Some traders are abandoning their stores in the Lusaka city market, opting to trade from the streets or relocating to other markets. And market management says it is losing close to 50% of its monthly returns due to, its, to this migration of traders from stores. Finally, in the news, Football Association of Zambia FAS president Andrew Kamanga says he remains hopeful that the Chipolo Bowl can win their fifth Kosafa title this year. Kamanga also says he expects some of the players at the Kosafa tournament to make it to the final team ahead of the AFCON qualifiers. That ends the news at 20 on TV2. Thank you so much for watching. Good night and God bless.